Okay, perfect. Okay. Um, so hello again, everyone. It's uh, great to be here uh, presenting this research to you. And it was nice to, to see everyone's face and kind of get a feel for who's in the audience here virtually. Um, so I'm going to share some of my research um, together with Dr. Lori Daniels from the Turing Lab on yellow cedar decline across BC. Um, and I think this follows really well um, after Will's presentation sharing about the range expansion or contraction um, across the coast. Okay. Um, so to start out, I just wanted to acknowledge that my research was conducted on the unceded ancestral territory of the Haida, Simshian, New Hulk, and Owekonu nations. And since I'm pretty early in the morning here, um, I'll start out just by setting the stage and saying that yellow cedar has existed along the coast of Western North America for thousands of years and pollen evidence from Vancouver Island all the way up to Alaska dates back at least two to 5,000 years. Yellow cedar has coexisted with and has been stewarded by indigenous peoples for millennia through to today. And yellow cedar is really um, deeply woven into indigenous cultures and mythologies and has been used from everything um, from canoes to totem poles um, to bark weaving. So the decay resistant nature and the soft carvable wood make it an extremely valuable and important species. So unfortunately, this important and iconic species is in decline, as I'm sure many of you know. Um, so this is a photo that I took this past summer in the Prince Rupert area. So you can see all of the gray um, trees here in the photo are dead and, and declining yellow cedar. So decline was first identified at low elevation in Southeast Alaska and has been dated back to the 1880s. However, there have been peaks in decline um, in, 18, or in 1970 and 1980. And so to this day, the most severe decline is still centered in Southeast Alaska. So you can see in the map um, on the left, that would be this area up here. You can see a lot of the red um, denoting decline. Um, however, it's, it's spreading down into BC as well. So, so for, since it was first documented, decline has spread upward in elevation and then southward into BC. And the decline now spans over 10 degrees of latitude and covers 400,000 hectares of forest. So decades of research in Alaska have identified climate change and war climate warming as the, the driving factor of this decline. So declining snow melt or declining snow levels and earlier snow melt lead to uh, a loss of the insulating snowpack, which um, exposes yellow cedar's fine roots to late season frost events. And yellow cedar is uniquely vulnerable to this due to the fact that its roots are both more shallow and less cold hardy than co-occurring species. And so because of this mechanism, we often see decline on sites that are more shallow rooted um, because they're wetter or because they have very shallow soils. So it's a complex mechanism, but the main risk factors can be boiled down to snowpack and rooting depth with overarching winter temperatures and thaw freeze events. So research from Brian Buma and others to map this decline has shown that at the broad scale, decline is centered um, around higher latitudes. You can see along the bottom axis in these two panels, decline in red again is seen at higher latitudes. And then at the mid scale, decline is seen at lower elevation um, at the higher latitudes and then increases in, in elevation as you move south. And then in the panel on the right, you can see decline occurs within a band of minus two to plus two mean winter temperature. So if we turn this graph on its side, you can see how this really tracks with what's been mapped in terms of decline with a lot of it centered up in the north and then spreading down the coast of BC um, in line with, with the northern tip of Vancouver Island. So historically, a lot of research has been focused in Southeast Alaska 
And there still remain some questions about decline in BC. So our research aims to answer when did yellow cedar decline um, occur in BC? What proportion of trees are affected across the range? And which trees are affected by decline? So my research pulls from three nodes across the coast of BC. The first one is on Haida Gwaii, um, which I which I did as part of my master's research. And I'm now tying that together with another study that draws from sites on the North Coast and the Central Coast to complete these three nodes. So at each of these sites, we measured and cored both living and dead yellow cedars. And overall, this added up to over a thousand tree cores that we have from across BC. So all of these tree cores allowed us to create really long records of yellow cedar growth and dynamics. Across the, across the three nodes, we were able to reconstruct growth and yellow cedar dynamics um, year over year for 700 to 1,000 years. Um, in addition, we we're all, also able to date the outer ring date of trees that had died. And so because yellow cedar is so resistant to decay and can re remain on the landscape for a long time. We we're able to reconstruct years of death going back to 1748 on the North Coast and to 1860 on Haida Gwaii. So that gives us a really long record of the mortality rate on these sites. So when did yellow cedar decline occur? You can see from these graphs that the timing differed across the three different nodes. So starting on the North Coast, the um, increase in mortality really started in the 1950s, however, peaked in the 1980s to 1990s. Moving down to the Central Coast, there's a later increase in mortality that happens in the 1970s, and the peak is after the year 2000. Finally, on Haida Gwaii, decline began, began in the 1960s, however, most decline occurred um, from the 1990s to 2000. So you can see that the scales are different, that um, the mortality rate was much lower on Haida Gwaii and more spread out over time. However, it kind of followed the same pattern with that peak after the 1990s. So going back to our map, starting in Southeast Alaska, decline first began in the 1880s near sea level at low elevation and then peaked in the 1970s 280s. And then moving down to the North Coast node, we saw that mortality increased in the 1950s, followed by an increase in mortality in the 1960s on Haida Gwaii. And so these, um, both of the decline at these locations occurred at mid elevation. And then finally, on the Central Coast, um, decline began in 1970 at higher elevation. And importantly, mortality um, peaked at all three locations in BC after 1980. And that follows um, the time of greatest climate warming in these locations. So we can see that decline um, started up in the north and then tracked further south and upwards in elevation over time. So how severe was yellow cedar decline? The timing of decline um, on the north and central coast differed as we just saw. However, by the time that we actually sampled these sites, the overall results were similar with around 80% of yellow cedars in affected stands having died. Um, this was different on Haida Gwaii. Mortality was a lot lower at 48%, but we also have an additional data point, which was the percent of trees that were declining. So that refers to trees that are still alive, but have um, started to decline, showing visual crown symptoms of decline. So on Haida Gwaii, if we add up the declining and dead trees, you um, end up with around 75% of trees affected. Finally, which trees were affected? Um, so this is an example from the North Coast node. Um, however, across all three nodes, um, the results are very similar. We see that trees of all um, ages, sizes, and canopy positions were affected by the death and decline. So you can see across the top um, panel here on the left, 
that um, there were trees that had died across all DBH classes and basal area. Um, on the bottom left, um, there were trees across all age classes from very young trees to the long lived 600 year plus old trees. Um, there were a higher proportion of live trees in the one of the young age classes there from 100 to 200 years. However, this was not statistically significant and also across um, canopy position. So this is evidence that forest dynamics um, is not the cause of this increased mortality and further supports um, the climate mechanism. So linking back to climate change, uh, my work from Haida Gwaii has indicated that healthy yellow cedar growth is facilitated by warmer summer temperatures. However, trees in decline or, had, or which had since died are limited by warmer and drier winter conditions. And so this relationship really links back to the mechanism of decline that I described in the beginning and corresponds with all of the research that was, was carried out in Alaska. And both of these correlations were strongest in recent decades after 1980, paralleling the greatest warming. I'm gonna um, follow up with the same investigations on the North and Central Coast to further investigate whether um, the relation to climate and the drivers of decline are similar across um, the coast, across the range of yellow cedar um, across the coast of BC. So to conclude, um, yellow cedar decline is ongoing and has intensified since the 1980s. Decline has tracked um, the climate envelope and is perhaps evidence that decline will continue to spread as temperatures continue to increase. Um, and an interesting idea to kind of overlay this decline with um, the maps that, that Will showed us a moment ago of range expansion and contraction. And then finally, as uh, suggested by Lauren Oakes in her book, um, yellow cedar is maybe a canary in the forest for other snow dominated systems as the climate continues to warm. Uh, so just take a minute to say thank you to all of our collaborators and partners um, and funders for help with this project. And thank you to all of you for listening. <laughs>